What's up everybody? I'm Jason and welcome back to some more tips and tricks for the Canon EOS R5. This is episode 62. We're talking about video. We're going back to basics and we are talking this time about frame rates. So as usual, quick disclaimer, a lot of what I'm covering in this video applies to other Canon cameras that shoot videos such as the R3, R6, and R7, etc. However, unlike the still photographic side of things, there's far more nuance and complexity when it comes to the way settings interact and what settings are available on cameras when it comes to shooting video. I own and shoot with the EOS R5. That's the focus of these videos. That's the primary or the camera that I've used for all the demonstrations and testing that I am talking about. Now, what does that mean for you if you don't shoot with an EOS R5? Well, it means a lot of what I'm saying probably still applies to you. However, the exact details of some of the situations and some of the controls and some of the available settings will vary more than likely on your camera. So if you don't see something that I'm showing, check your manual. You might not have it as a function on your camera. Second, in this course of this video, I'm going to be talking in both hybrid camera and cinema camera terms. I don't know why Canon chose to do it this way, but Canon has used or uses slightly different nomenclature for things in the cinema EOS OS versus the photo OS. So I will be covering about five broad topics in this video. We're going to start with the video system setting on the camera. We're going to talk about the conventional frame rates. We're going to talk about high frame rate mode briefly, not in detail because I will be doing another video almost certainly on high frame rate mode as a thing. We're going to talk about the implications of the different frame rates on various aspects of your video and what you shoot. And then we are going to talk about the mechanical process of simply selecting the frame rate on your camera. So to kick this off, let's talk about the video system setting on the camera. Now, if you're coming to the R5 from a cinema camera, this will be familiar to you as the system frequency setting. There are some subtle differences between what Canon does on the R5 and what they do in the cinema cameras and the way they organize things. Uh, honestly, in some ways, I think the R5's system selection makes a tiny bit things a tiny bit simpler, and I think that's the reason they did it compared to what the cinema cameras do. So, setup menu two, video system, is where the setting is located in the camera's menus, and you will have two options, and two options only, NTSC and PAL. Now, broadly speaking, these control three things on the camera. So, first of all, it controls the available frame rates that you can select from. The consequence of that is that it also controls, and this is sort of the primary aspect of why you would want to or need to change this and why you would want to shoot in different frame rates, it controls how the video you're shooting syncs up. Now, technically, it does not mechanically sync up or electrically sync up, but the effect is similar with the flicker from lights caused by your AC power grid. The final thing that it controls is the native output frame rate of the camera when it's set to a, or when it's connected to a TV over HDMI. This will apply in uh, when the camera is in menus and live view. If you shoot 25 frame per second or PAL content on the camera, it will output PAL frame rates to your TV. The camera will actually switch that on a per video playback basis, but for the regular menus, live view, etc., the camera will output at whether, you know, at the correct frame rates for either NTSC or PAL, depending on this setting. So the primary function of this setting at this point in time is really, in my opinion, to manage flicker with AC lights. This is a quick demonstration of that, and it's these two video clips were shot with the exact same shutter speed, 1 50th of a second, same ISO, same aperture. The only difference between them is the NTSC video was shot at an NTSC frame rate of 23.98 frames per second. The PAL video was shot at 25 frames per second. What you notice in this video is that there's banding that's very obvious in the PAL video as it moves across the screen. Now, what you may not know or notice is that there is also banding in the NTSC video. However, you can't really see it at normal playback. You can see it if you scrub through the video in, say, the YouTube, you know, grab the little slider and scrub through the video on YouTube, or I noticed it very obviously scrubbing through the video on my computer. But the banding is moves so much slower across the frame that it's not readily obvious. So which should you choose? Which mode should you choose? And the easy answer is the stick to the system that's used in the area that you're shooting in or that you are being told to use for the project that you're shooting. 
More specifically, use NTSC when you're shooting in countries with 60 hertz AC power, or shooting indoors at least in countries with 60 hertz AC power. Use PAL when you're shooting in countries with 50 hertz AC power. Broadly speaking, the choice doesn't matter that much with respect to shooting with proper video lights. It doesn't matter that much for playback on modern devices, uh, but it will matter if you're doing something that's broadcast related in, uh, or potentially will matter if you're doing something that's broadcast related. Finally, the camera does support a true 24 frame per second mode. It's available in either NTSC or PAL mode. It doesn't matter. You don't have to change the setting to get to that. With the big overreaching system video system setting out of the way, let's talk about the frame rate options that are available on the EOS R5. So there are four frame rates plus one available when shooting in NTSC mode and three frame rates plus one available when shooting in PAL mode. There is a limitation with respect to which frame rates you can choose with respect to resolution. When you're shooting in full frame mode on the camera, when you're shooting either full HD or 4K standard quality, the camera can shoot at up to 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second if you're shooting in high frame rate mode. 8K and 4K high quality, both of which read the sensor out at 8K resolution, can shoot at up to 30 frames per second. Now, when the camera is in crop mode, again, 4K and full HD are available at shooting at up to 60 frames per second. Full HD is the only option that's available when shooting at 120 frame per second high frame rate mode. Now, as I said, there is also a true 24 frame per second mode that records at exactly 24 frames per second and not the NTSC 23.9 and change frames per second. This option is available in both NTSC and PAL video systems. However, it is only selectable when the camera is set to use a DCI resolution. So 8KD or 4KD has to be selected for the resolution. Finally, high frame rate mode. So shooting at the highest frame rates on the R5 is not part of the conventional frame rates the camera shoots at. You can't just access it through the same setting in the camera. You have to enable high frame rate mode in order for that to happen. Now, when you do this, camera locks its frame rates to the high frame rate mode frame rate. So what that means is 120 frames per second, or technically 119.88 frames per second when you're shooting an NTSC, 100 frames per second if you're shooting in PAL. Unfortunately, PAL users get a little bit of a short end of the stick on this one, as you can slow down NTSC footage five-fold by going from 120 to 24. PAL, you can only slow down four-fold going from 100 to 25. Now the camera is in high frame rate no mode, no audio is recorded, and compression is limited to all I only, so you can't use RAW or IPV compression in that mode. So let's talk a little bit about the impact of frame rates on video in the bigger context. So why you would want to shoot at different frame rates. First one is exposure. In video, frame rate is inexorably tied to the exposure time of the frame. Now put broadly, the shutter speed cannot be longer than the frame time. Now you may notice if you've played with this on the R5, you can actually turn the shutter speed down slower than a 60th of a second when you're shooting at 60 frames per second. What's actually going on here is that the camera exposes for the longer time and then duplicates the image on multiple frames to make the higher frame rate work. So if you're shooting a 30th of a second, but at 60 frames per second, the camera makes an exposure for a 30th of a second and then copies that to two frames instead of one so that it makes up the, the frame rate. The, the video files frame rate stays 60 frames per second, but the record time or the, the actual frame rate that you're recording at is gonna be slower. So in the video world uh, and cinematography world, shutter speeds typically are half of set to half of the frame time. In the cinematography world, they'd call that a 180 degree shutter angle. We don't have shutter angles on the R5, so the way to calculate this is basically just take the shutter set the shutter speed to one over twice the frame rate. So if you're shooting at 24 frames a second, one over two times 24 is one over 48. That's what you want the shutter speed to be. Now, of course, the R5 also doesn't have a 1 48th second shutter speed, so you would pick the closest to that, which would be 1 50th. Higher frame rates, though, the consequence of all of this is that they require compensation for the fact that 
the shutter speed is going to be faster. So you either need to add more light, turning up the brightness of the lights in your studio or whatnot, shoot at a faster aperture or shoot at a higher ISO to compensate for the fact that the shutter speed is faster. Now, there are two limitations to the exposure side of things on the R5. The first one, as I said, is that there is no shutter angle mode on the camera, so you can't set the shutter angle to 180 degrees and then just ignore it and let the camera automatically deal with whatever the shutter speed should be when you change frame rates. You have to manually change frame rates every time, or shutter speeds every time you change frame rates. The second one is that the camera will not auto adjust the shutter speed for you. So if you're in manual or shutter priority, the camera and you've set a shutter speed and that shutter speed is, for example, say longer than the frame rate. So for example, you're shooting at 24 frames a second with a 1 50th of a second shutter speed, which would be roughly normal for that. And you switch to 60 frames per second, the camera will, first of all, it won't adjust the shutter speed up to a 60th of a second, which would give you 60 frames per second. It also won't adjust the shutter speed up to a one, one 125th of a second, which would be sort of the normal frame uh, shutter speed for 60 frame per second content. You will have to do that manually. Second, Perceived sharpness and the ability to track detail in the frame or movement in the frame. So higher frame rates have a higher amount of perceived and technically actual sharpness. Now partially this is due to the fact that shutter speeds or that faster shutter speeds in a frame will have less motion blur. The other aspect of this is that our brain can actually process more information than say 24 frames per second. So 24 frames per second with a lot of motion blur is done to make things look smooth at that frame rate, but if you have fast moving action, that thing tends to be really blurred and much harder to see, or maybe it moves out of frame in a single frame as opposed to giving you the ability to track it moving out of frame. Therefore, it's harder to track motion, fast motion at slow frame rates. Now, the inverse of this is that fast or using higher frame rates is useful when shooting fast moving action to increase the clarity of what you're seeing. Now, regardless, all of this is context dependent. Now, the final impact that frame rate really has on things is with bitrate. Fortunately, it's not as bad as the case with resolution. Double the frame rate, expect the bitrate to double. Something to note about the R5 and, well, all of Canon's cameras is that they don't target different bit rates for every possible frame rate that the camera can be set to. Instead, they have three major groups of target bit rates. They have slow frame rate, bit, uh, one bit rate for the slow frame rates. This includes 23.97, 24, 25, and 30 frame per second content. They have one bit rate for the medium speed bit rates. This is 50 and 60 frame per second content. And then they have one bit rate for the high frame rate bit, uh, high frame rate video. So the 100 and 120 frame per second content. Obviously bit rates also tar change with the compression method that you've selected and the resolution that you've selected. It, there's a lot to go into there. I'm not going to go into them in this video. However, if you are looking for information on what bit rates you can expect the camera to shoot at, there is usually a table in the back of your manual. If you're shooting with an R5 in the back of the firmware 1.6 manual on the English version, you will find this table on pages 918 to 921. It is long. So that brings me to the last topic I want to cover in this video, which is the mechanical process of configuring the frame rate that your camera is going to shoot at. Now, if you saw my video on resolution selection for the R5, you already know what's going on here. If you haven't, I'll run through it quickly. First of all, there's two ways to configure the frame rate on the camera. You can either go through the menu or you can use the quick control menu to get there. Either method takes you to the same place. So if you're going through the menus, you're gonna hit the menu button. You're gonna to go to the shoot one menu. You're gonna to go to the top entry, which is movie record quality. Then you're gonna to go to the top entry in that menu page, which is movie record size. Frame rate is the second row. Resolution is the first, frame rate's the second. Compression quality is the third. The alternate method to doing this is to use the quick control menu. So when your camera is in shooting standby, that is you have a live view image up, but you're not actually recording, you can hit the quick control menu button. That's the Q with a box around it. On the left side of the screen, the second entry down, you will find the movie record size entry. 
You will know this because it will show you the resolution, the frame rate, and the compression quality, and you will see a virtual button appear on the bottom of the screen that says Set Movie Record Size. Press the Set button on the back of the camera or tap the set virtual button on the screen at the bottom, and it will bring you to the exact same menu that you were at if you went through the menus to get to the Movie Record Size menu. Now, a couple of notes on this. You can change the setting using either the touch screen, the multi-controller, or the dials to pick whatever settings you want to use. If you are using the dial, something to just keep in the back of your mind, the main dial, that's the one that's behind the shutter release, changes the setting, the active setting for the selected setting. Okay, that, Think of it as scrolling horizontally. So if you are set to change the frame rate, it will change what the frame rate is. If you're set to change resolution, it will change what the resolution is. The quick command dials, so these are the dial on the back of the camera and the dial around the mode button, change which of these settings in this menu you are actually changing. So think of it as scrolling vertically. So you use the quick command dial to scroll down to frame rate from resolution or whatever, and then you use the main dial to select the frame rate that you actually want to shoot at. Something else to note is that unlike most of the other settings, at least for still photography on the R5, you must press the set button, either the physical one on the back of the camera or the virtual one that's on the screen, to save the settings when you change the frame rate options. If you don't do that, if you just half press the shutter release, the camera will jump out to back into shooting standby and it won't actually change the setting. Now, the other thing to know about this menu is that the options that you can select from flow from top to bottom. What this means is that the resolution you pick on the top line will change which frame rate options and compression options are enabled by uh, for, for you to select in the recording. So if you don't have something enabled, then make sure that you're not selecting, for example, 24 frames per second requires a D resolution. Now the other major frame rate option that you have to deal with or might want to deal with is shooting at high frame rates, so the 100 and 120 frames per second. You will find this option under the shoot one menu, movie record quality, high frame rate setting, and you'll have an option to either enable or disable the setting. Now when you enable the high frame rate mode on the R5, it locks the camera to the high frame rate frame rate. So 120 frames per second in NTSC or 100 frames per second in PAL. It disables audio recording, so no audio is recorded on the R5 when the camera is shooting in high frame rate mode. And it will disable the ability to select 8K resolution. So you will only be able to select 4K or Full HD in full frame mode and Full HD only in movie crop mode. You also will not be able to select a slower frame rate uh, in the standard movie uh, recording setting or size menu, you will have to disable high frame rate shooting before you can go back to selecting the regular stuff. Of course, if you use these settings a lot, they save in your custom shoot user modes or your custom shooting modes. They also can be added to your My Menu if you are uh, want to access them that way. So that is frame rates on the R5 in a nutshell. If you found this useful or at least a bit informative, let me know by hitting that like button. If this kind of thing seems like it might be your kind of thing, please consider subscribing if you're not already. And as always, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.